Welcome to the Box Jumper Podcast, episode number seven. I'm your host, John St. Amand, a CrossFit L1 trainer and Catalyst Athletics L1 certified weightlifting coach, master's athlete, husband, dad, and small business owner in Bedford, Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, This podcast is a deep dive into everything CrossFit and fitness, basically just me exploring elements of this fitness journey that I'm on that I find interesting and that I find might be interesting to others. When I first started this crazy box jumper idea, uh, I mentioned in a past episode that my intention was to make it all about visiting as many boxes as I could. Uh, Noble and ambitious idea though that might have been, uh, it was perhaps a little less practical than I had thought. I do travel occasionally, personally, and for work, but it's often to the same areas so the range of affiliates that I'd be able to visit over time was relatively limited. So that prompted me to shift gears and turn box jumper into a website and a podcast. Uh, and while I still visit affiliates when I travel, it's not the focus of what I do with the website and the podcast on an ongoing basis. That being said, I did just come back from a family vacation, and of course, I dropped into a couple of boxes while I was away. Uh, As always, the experience was awesome, and the communities were welcoming, the coach was excellent, uh, the programming was varied, exactly what you hope for when you walk into a box for the first time. For those of you out there that haven't yet had an opportunity to drop into another affiliate, I would encourage you to give it a try. Even if you just visit another box in your area, it's a worthwhile experience for several reasons, and I'll I'll give you sort of my top three. First, it's fun. You know what the CrossFit community is like, and I would expect dropping into just about any box, the community would be happy to see you and give you a warm welcome and a great workout. Make sure to stick around afterwards and take some photos. Second. It's a great source of validation of the work that you're putting in. The whole idea of CrossFit is functional fitness that can be applied anywhere, and so preparing you for the unknown. To walk into another affiliate and be challenged by someone else's programming is useful. Anything that you can get out of uh, that can get you out of a routine, if a routine was to be had in CrossFit generally anyway, is a solid way to prove the work that you've put in to this point has been effective. And third, it's a great way to test your coachability. In your own gym, invariably you'll get comfortable. And it's a good thing, don't get me wrong. Um, You get comfortable with the coaching style and the cues that you hear from the team in your box. You may only see a couple of coaches per week because they're coaching the same classes on the same schedule that you use for your workouts. But there may be other coaches in your box that you don't get to work with. Adapting to the coaching at any given time is a useful skill. And you may get a cue that you haven't heard before that helps you move better. You may absorb the very same cue that you've heard dozens of times because it was delivered differently by someone else. And there's lots of benefits to being exposed to new coaches. Um, And that's easy when you go to another box. So as long as you check the ego at the door and you listen to what other experienced coaches have to say, you'll be in great shape. Now there's a variety of other reasons that it's worthwhile to visit another box, but rather than give you a bunch of my reasons, as it happens I have a guest this week that has very much taken this idea to heart. I was connected with Chris Kerr just as I was returning from my family vacation. He messaged Osprey Athletics on Instagram asking about a drop-in class, and one of the other folks that along with me monitors and manages the social media channels for Osprey quickly responded with some of the particulars. Chris messaged back saying that he would be by for an evening class that night, and it happened to be the same day that I was getting home from my road trip. He also said that he regularly drops into other boxes and had plenty of experience in CrossFit. He shared that he was aiming to visit 100 boxes before the end of the year, and Osprey would be number 69. Upon hearing that, PJ Mackinnon, who also co-hosts another excellent podcast called Night and Day with his wife, Alana, all about CrossFit, family, and healthy living, told Chris about my similar box-jumping mission and connected us. I asked Chris if he'd be interested in sharing his story, and he was game. So I went the same evening uh, and went to that class with Chris, got to share a workout with him um, before asking to have him stick around after class and do a short interview to talk about his experience traveling to a lot of other boxes. So fire up the CrossFit Affiliates map on main site. In 10 seconds, I'll chat with Nomad CrossFitter Chris Kerr, and by the end, you'll be plotting your visits for a guest wad. All right. Well, we're uh, we're recording. We're live. We are doing uh, what I guess would be considered my first on location interview. <laughs> we're here at, uh, at Osprey Athletics in Bedford, and I'm talking to uh, my virtual Instagram doppelganger, uh, Box Jumpers. Box jumps. Bo- or Box jumps. Right. Box jumps. 
of uh, 636 um, on Instagram. Uh, Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Great to be here, Doug. Um, talk about uh, weird timing. I mean, I, I just happened to be coming back from a trip, having uh, box jumped to a couple of places myself uh, while away with the family. Uh, and when you messaged uh, the gym to say, hey, you wanted to drop by, um, PJ, one of our, our members and, and one of the other administrators on our, uh, on our Instagram and Facebook accounts, uh, along with me, uh, but I was being safe. I wasn't actually typing anything while I was driving, <laughs> but I did see the, the exchange occur, and I thought, oh, that, that's cute. He's matchmaking us a little bit, <laughs> realizing yeah. that you're doing something that's very much like what I started doing, um, even before I decided to, to turn it into a podcast, was the idea of, visiting other gyms and checking out what the community's like. And you've, you've got a unique uh, line of work that allows you and, and affords you the opportunity to travel a little bit more. So why don't you tell me just a little bit about what it is that you do and, and how, how it is that you're visiting all of these boxes all over the place. Sure. Um, I never really intended to make a habit of driving around visiting CrossFit gyms. I mm -hmm. uh, started out like everybody else. I had a membership, did my fundamentals at CrossFit Moncton. Uh, I was a member there. Um, even in my previous job, I still traveled a lot, but it was mostly within Atlantic Canada. So I got home most nights of the week and was always home on weekends. Uh, maintained a membership there and then life changes and got a, a different job uh, and took over a job that gives me, uh, effectively, my traveling territory is all of Canada. Uh, I work for a, a tractor manufacturer based out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, and I serve as their service manager, uh, looking after a network of 170 some odd dealer locations coast to coast in Canada, going from St. John's, Newfoundland, to uh, Duncan, BC, up to Prince George, all through everywhere. That's a pretty large territory. Fairly large territory. Uh, what that translates to is about 220 nights a year away from home. Uh, right now I'm sitting, uh, we're here on what the 8th or 9th of August. Uh, I just looked the other day, I've got 160 hotel stays on the year. 38 flights and I put 65,000 kilometers on my car. Wow. And in the process of doing so, uh, just in year 2018, I've currently, as of right now, having stopped into Osprey here, visited 69 CrossFit gyms on my way to a goal of hitting 100 gyms in 2018. Um, again, not really, wasn't really my plan. Started keeping track uh, earlier this year, so sort of thinking, oh, you know, I should really keep a list. So as I visit towns, I there's spots that I like to go back and see friends at other gyms I've been to before, right. but if there's three or four gyms in town, if I know I'm going to get there fairly regularly, I'll try and hit all of them. Right. And just started keeping track and realized as I was coming close to halfway through the year, I was sneaking up on 50 and said, by the end of the year, if I can hit 100 gyms, you know, I think that'll put me in a pretty unique position to, to comment on what CrossFit's like coast to coast in Canada. For sure. And, and also down through the U.S. and, and overseas as well. So. Now, so how are you finding the contrast between the communities that you're visiting versus the community of your home box? I've never been to two boxes that were even remotely the same. Uh, I've never been to a bad one either. I've had fantastic experiences at every gym I've visited. Mm -hmm. um, I've been absolutely welcomed into the community at some. Uh, there are a few, and in fact, I say I don't have, currently have a membership. I do maintain a membership at CrossFit Goliath in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is near my office. It's the one place I spend enough time to right. warrant actually maintaining a membership. Right. Uh, I, I would definitely consider myself a member of that gym community. I, I stay in touch with them on their Facebook page and their Instagram and all their socials. Uh, I've made some personal friends down there. In fact, a, a good friend of mine just split off. She's opening her own gym uh, just outside Raleigh down there. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's spots that I love to, to stop in every time I'm in town. I love to go and visit certain gyms. Uh, others just walk in, knock on the door, hey, never been here before, you got room for me in your class. And, yeah. and uh, I've yet to be turned away and I've yet to have a bad experience. That's Fortunately, that's been my experience as well. Um, uh, like you said, I, I haven't had a bad experience at any one of them. Um, you definitely get a different vibe from one gym to the next. And a lot of that is influenced by who happens to be there the, for the class that you happen to drop into and who's coaching and what the programming uh, just, uh, just happens to be on any given day. Um, but you certainly get a, a sense of what the vibe is in that community and, and just by how welcoming they are. And, oh, absolutely. And, you know, it, it, fortunately, every place that I've been to has felt largely like home. Um, you know, I mean, everybody has completely different styles of programming, different styles of coaching, but I mean, frankly, you get that even in, within your own box. And, and even with, with you as a coach, um, I mean, you certainly... Uh, I was listening to one of your podcasts earlier, your, your top 10 reasons why you like to be a coach. Yeah. And, and you talk about the coaches who check out. Um, and even the best coaches. Uh, I've worked at, in gyms that I've traveled to regularly or gyms, uh, even my original home gym. 
Uh, I can think back there, great coaches, and you see them day in, day out, and you come in one day and you go, you know, he's having a bad day. Yeah. He's preoccupied, something else is going on. So, you know, when you, when you travel around and, and with all of the gyms I've visited and, and literally hundreds of coaches that I've worked with over the last, well, three years, so years I've been doing CrossFit, yeah. Um, yeah, safe to say I've worked with hundreds of coaches and many of them have had one chance. And I've gone back and, and seen some and gone, okay, yeah, I liked you better this time than I did the first time, or, you know, you're, you weren't as good today as you were the last time. Right. But even the worst coach on the worst day that I've ever run into at a CrossFit gym has been outstanding. I've, like I said, I've yet to have a bad experience. I've had great experiences and I've had good experiences. Yeah. And I've never walked away going, I won't be back there. Didn't yeah, back there. one of the things that we wind up, um, I guess, occasionally having to remind ourselves, um, particularly when we get comfortable in our own gym setting, is that, you know, all the coaches are people too. So they have they have days where they're distracted. Stuff outside the gym is influencing how they how they behave inside the gym. And, and, you know, one of the best practices that I think every um, coach tries to put in play is to try to let that go and, and try to be the best they can possibly be at the front of the room at all times. Um, but no matter what you do, there's going to be variations from day to day and how engaged you are and, and how, um, you know, how successful you are in, in being that combination of uh, instructive and entertaining and, and moving the class forward. Um, you know, everybody hits it at, at different points and to different degrees from day to day. Now you have a, you have kind of a unique spin on things in being able to see the number of different coaches and being able to to go in with that first impression uh, lens. Um, you know how how different is it being able to go into these gyms and every single time you you get in front of these classes particularly while you're traveling you're encountering a new coach so you they don't know you you don't know them uh, that's one of the best things that happened to me as a traveling crossfitter if you will uh it was probably about eight months ago six eight months ago and forgive me somebody in the internet land will probably correct me but i, I listened to chris spieler's podcast mm -hmm. uh one oh, of the better ones out there oh, yeah. uh, and he actually did an episode uh he and uh, doug zakaris uh his cohort on the show talking about how to be a good drop-in and how to host a good drop-in both from a box owner and an athlete's perspective mm -hmm. and for me as a, as an athlete traveling around I never like to drop in cold. I always try to reach out to a box before I show up. Give them an email like I did earlier today. Try to do it the day before, but sometimes the, the nature of my business, I'm going to end up in a town I wasn't expecting to be in. Yeah. Give them a, a message. Reach out on Facebook, social media somewhere, email, phone call, something. Say, hey, look, I'm an experienced CrossFitter. I've been doing this for a while. I travel for a living. I love to drop in. What works for you? Um, I've yet to have anybody come back and say, no, that doesn't work. It's always been come on by. I like to show up early. I like to introduce myself to the coach. Yeah. I always take a quick walk around the gym, familiarize myself with where the stuff is because I don't want to be that guy going, where's the kettlebells? Where's the metal yeah. Where's the, um, you know, have a quick look around. Always pay attention. Usually try to latch on with the, the members as they come in. Like, you know, are we doing a group warm up or is a warm up posted and you do it on your own? I mean, that's that changes box to box, how they handle that warm up. For sure. Some, it's come in, sort yourself out, class starts on the minute, bang. Others, it's, all right, everybody, we're going to grab a foam roller and stretch and do some mobi mobility stuff. Yeah. Try to, like, familiarize myself and be flexible and go with the flow. Once the class starts, try to, you know, stay out of everybody's way, do my thing. Uh, again, I've, I've been doing this a while. I kind of know, you know, I, I don't need to go to the, the chart and figure out what my 75% is. You know, I, yeah. I know what my, my numbers are. I show up prepared for class. I've got the right equipment. I'm, I'm ready to go. And then once the class starts, I try to be coachable. I mean, that's that's the big one, you know. It's, it's so difficult when you work with a different coach every day and this coach is giving you, okay, you know what, you're, you're landing with your feet a little too wide and you're clean. And the next coach, your feet are too close together in the clean. And it's really easy to sometimes get a little frustrated with different coaching styles or, or different techniques that people are trying to throw at you. Uh, but it would be the same in, in going to the same gym and working with the different coaches within a box. For sure. Um, you know, trying to, to balance one off the other. Um, you know, and every once in a while, you, you travel to a different box, and a coach will tell you the same thing that everybody else has told you, and the way they tell you, it just clicks, and you just go with it and roll yeah. with it. Um, you know, try. It. I love it when I go to a new box and I actually get some coaching. A lot of boxes you'll drop in. As a drop in, they kind of ignore you, let you do your thing. 
Again, for me, that works. Uh, at home, I, I got a garage gym. I work out by myself all the time. I try not to be too needy, but it is nice when a coach comes around and gives you some pointers and some cues. I mean, that's why we come to boxes, right? That's oh, one yeah. of the great things about the CrossFit model is qualified experience coaching. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just try to be coachable. Try to, to go with the class flow, stay out of everybody's way, you know, socialize. I always try and introduce myself to everybody, you know, fist bumps and high fives at the end. Uh, and then I always like to take a couple of photos of the gym. I post them on my Instagram page, um, shoot a message to the box afterwards, thanking them for the drop in, um, you know, collect a t-shirt here and there. And, yeah. and just, I, I really enjoy it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Great, great way to travel. Yeah. I mean, in visiting some of the gyms that I've been to, I've, I've liked hearing, um, different ways that, that different coaches with different, uh, experience, different cues, um, for ostensibly, even when I'm doing the exact same movement, um, you know, from one workout to another and getting a slightly different cue or, or getting the cue at a different time, um, you know, some of that variation that you, you, you can get that in your own gym. But there's, there's limits on how many variations you're going to hear when there's six or 10 or 12 coaches in a gym versus the experience that you're having going to, to you know, three, four or five times that, um, then you'll get the benefit um, or at least arguably there's there's the opportunity for the benefit of hearing different cues from from different coaches that have different experience um, you know I, I certainly have found um, you're right like some, some of the coaches are um, really outgoing and, and very interested in coaching even the, the the new drop in and then others are a little bit more tentative because they're not really sure they don't know you yet so they don't know how coachable they are uh, th that you are they don't know how you'll respond to their particular cues and so some of them are a little bit more conservative in, in what they'll say um, and it's it's kind of it's interesting because i get that i get to look at that from the perspective of the athlete but also myself being a coach i like to hear as many variations as possible um, from as many coaches as possible because uh, i'm finding that to be part of the learning exercise in visiting all these other gyms as well Absolutely. I, I don't coach myself, uh, but from, again, from the experience I've had working with so many different coaches, there are, there are moments uh, and techniques and, and some drills and things that I've seen from an individual coach and thought, I'm going to file that because someday, if I ever do decide to coach, I want to use that. I've also been to some and thought, that's a little odd. Yeah. I, I don't know that that would necessarily be the technique I would take. But if, if I were a coach and, and for those out there uh, who are coaches, visit other gyms. I mean, it's a oh, professional yeah. development, whatever you want to call it, personal development, just the experience, drop into the gym up the street, drop into the gym in the next town, um, and just sit at the back of classes and watch other coaches coach. Oh yeah. And, and you, you can't help but pick stuff up. I see that as, uh, well, I mean, uh, I, I'm considering doing my L2 sometime fairly soon. And, um, you know, that, that program is explicitly about making you a better coach. So it's, it's all about workshops and feedback sessions with with the the flow master and, and the, the coaching environment that you have um, in that setting and other coaches giving you tips on what you're doing well what you what you need to improve and breaking it down into components and i've always seen going into other gyms as sort of a mini opportunity to to take that same thought process into what i'm doing and, and you know I, that's why i've liked going to other boxes, not only um, experiencing their classes, but for some of them I've dropped in well in advance of the class, met the owner, gotten kind of the lay of the land. They talked to me about, you know, how they've how they built up their gym and, and what their approach has been and um, how they've staffed up and, and all of these things. So I wind up getting kind of the, the behind the scenes look at the way that their gyms are, are run. Um, and, and it gives me kind of a, an interesting perspective on the way things might ultimately move for a whole bunch of different gyms you know it, you, you look at what's similar between them and then what's a little bit different and how you know some people come from it from a, a business background others come purely from a, a sport and athletics background others come you know they're, they're physios they're kinesiologists and they found a sport and they decided to turn it into a business so there's this interesting mix that you get with with box owners and with coaches um, and so you visit all of these places and, and you get a real good sense of where the community's head is and it's an interesting time too because you get to you know you go to visit the gyms and you get to see it in person it's a little bit different I mean there's such a, a, a deep amount of information available at fingertips with YouTube and, and the various gyms having their own websites and blogs and posting articles and, and putting videos up on all the various different social media channels so there's a lot of publishing opportunities 
for all of these experts that, that try out different things. I, I get tons of tips from um, you know CF Gymnastics and uh, Main Site, and uh, certainly when I'm listening to the, to the podcast, I just listened to Ben Bergeron's podcast uh, this week, and it, it, it strangely, despite the fact that it wasn't video, he was talking about the technique for ring muscle ups that I only just got recently. But the way that he described it has me thinking about a different thing that I'm going to try the next time I jump up on the rings. Um, and just the amount of information that you can get from so many different expert sources now that, you know, even in CrossFit's infancy would have been challenging. I mean, they, they, they built up that entire business while that technology was emerging. Absolutely. Uh, the, I mean, CrossFit.com publishes so much stuff directly through CF Gymnastics, through CF Weightlifting, through yeah. the main site. Uh, guys like Ben Bergeron, very free with information. Um, you know, for box owners out there, uh, Chris Cooper, uh, Two Mind Business and Catalyst Athletics yeah. up in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, shout out to Chris. I dropped into his gym a month or so ago. Um, you know, the, there's all these guys out there now. You know, well, gyms typically came from guys who wanted to work out mm. and found a way to make a living doing it. Yeah. Uh, and watching, I've gotten to the point now where I've seen enough boxes, I can walk in and sort of get a vibe as to how they operate as a business. And, you know, some of, some of the pinch points where, where guys run into trouble. Um, and, and I have actually recommended to a few box owners in the past, you know, you should talk to this guy. You know, give, give Chris Cooper a call. You know, I know he's, he's very free with his time and his information. Uh, he obviously has a product to sell, but, but he, he's very interested in, in seeing boxes succeed. Yeah. Uh, the, the podcast sphere, I mean, there's some amazing, amazing oh, yeah. information out there, um, you know, both from an athlete standpoint and from a business standpoint and just from a, 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 the CrossFit doctrine. Um, I mean, we, we've seen a real shift even in the last 18 to 24 months in, in the message coming out of, out of headquarters yeah. um, in terms of the, the health revolution. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a big part of, of why I do what I do. 220 nights a year on the road that translates simple math into 660 meals in restaurants yeah um and a lot of the time those are business meetings and they don't want to go for a salad down at freshie they want you know <laughs> they're going for steaks and yes we'll have that third bottle of wine yeah uh and when i first started traveling i, I felt the effects of it and, and had to get into doing something uh, so i started doing the hotel gym thing and the, the good life you know meathead yeah. powerlifting thing and then once I found CrossFit there was no going back uh, mm -hmm. my girlfriend talked me into doing that and, yeah. uh, after about a year of her chasing me and, <laughs> nah you're just going to hurt yourself and yeah so I, I jumped on whole hog but for those out there who do travel for business and in any aspect I mean, you don't have to travel as much as me but if you're in a new town on vacation on business whatever even you're on the other side of town and you don't think you're going to make class of your own reach out Find, you know, CrossFit.com, map, it's map.crossfit.com. I'll show you where the local box is. Hit, hit up their website, hit up their social, shoot them a message, drop in. You, you'll never go wrong. Yeah. Uh, and for those who are, you know, following programming, you know, oh, I don't want to mess with my programming. Forget it. Um, you know, I do follow, uh, I follow CrossFit Lynchpin programming, Pat Sherwood's programming when I'm home. Mm -hmm. When I travel... If I walk into a box, I'm going to jump into the class, and it may be the same workout I did yesterday, but I'm going to get out of there. I'm going to move. I'm going to feel great. There are those weeks of my favorite story. I, I was traveling. I hit four, four gyms in four towns in four days, and every single one of them had heavy, de heavy deadlifts program. <laughs> By day four, I, I went up to the coach and laughed, and I showed, opened up my Beyond the Whiteboard and said, man, I've done heavy deads four days in a row. Can I swap out cleans or something else? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, but no, I, I like to, to join in on the class and see the coaching. Yeah. And yeah, some weeks your programming isn't exactly going to follow, but you're going to get a good workout. You're going to feel great. Yeah, Just I mean, do it. It's like, certainly, um, you know, uh, Chris Beeler's podcast, certainly him and Doug have been talking about this idea of, you know, fitness is fitness. I mean, you know, it just do CrossFit. 100%. Um, you know, you don't have to be going for a PR in every class. You don't have to. And you can always adjust the programming. And if you're talking to the coaches, you know, the coaches are the, the best test for them is to have you come up and say, you know what, this particular movement, either I've done a lot this week or I'm not really feeling great. I need to adjust. What do you recommend um, to maintain the intent? Um, and so you may not get the same periodization that you would get if you were maintaining your own programming, but you're still going to get 
the fitness benefit and you control intensity and you can talk to the coaches that are there about modifying movements in order to maintain intent and, and still get the benefit. So, you know, there's, there's not really all that many ways that it can go wrong if you're really thinking about it and, and applying yourself to that idea of, you know, you're, you're just there to be part of the community and get the workout in. Yep. No, it's certainly I, better than staying home. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and failing that, go on Google, go on Facebook, go on Instagram, search for body weight or hotel gym workouts. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, if, if you're traveling, throw a speed rope in your bag. Find a gym, that's, find a hotel gym that's got some heavy dumbbells. Yeah. Do 50, 40, 30, 10 double unders and heavy dumbbell cleans. You will get a workout in. <laughs> yeah. You'll get like, a few strange looks from the, the other folks in the hotel gym. I, I, that's I okay. Have, get yeah, used to that. Get I've, comfortable. I've, with I've it. pushed the benches up against the wall and, <laughs> and, you know, doing burpees over benches in the hotel gym with your shirt off tends to get some odd looks, but <laughs> eh, whatever. That's all right. And most of them have pools too. So, you know, you can get a couple of different workouts in that you might not be able to get in your box either. Yeah. So yeah, it's, I, I love the, the challenge of being able to work out on the road and you know, if I've been fortunate everywhere that I've had to go has been kind of a major center. So finding a CrossFit box hasn't been difficult. In fact, the, the challenge has been picking which one I want to visit. Um, but it, it's been great because you know, just about every time I've had several of them respond, yeah, we've got room and either there's a drop-in fee or there isn't a drop-in fee or there's some combination where you buy a shirt and you get a free class or whatever the case may be. Um, but they're, they're all pretty accommodating. I go on main site, you find the local gym, pick one at random. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're in a city, you know, if you happen to find yourself in Tennessee, I would suggest you go to Mayhem. If you're in Boston, go to CrossFit One. It's definitely worth the trip. Yeah. If you're in the middle of nowhere, there's still going to be a gym nearby. There's so many. There's what 1,700 CrossFit gyms now. Yeah. They're everywhere. Um, the shirt I'm wearing today is from Functionally Fit CrossFit in Cold Lake, Alberta. Uh, long way from anywhere. <laughs> Great little gym. Uh, I was driving through Southern Ontario last week. Uh, another little shout out to CrossFit Attain uh, in Caledonia, Ontario. Went on main site, found this gym, hit their Facebook page, shot a message, can I come by for a drop in? Absolutely. Got the address, plugged into my GPS, and as I'm pulling up, I'm running a little late, I pull in, and I'm in a subdivision. And the address is a house with a two car garage. And I park in front of the house, and I'm Googling again, like, if I got the right spot, this can't be right. And I look up, and in the corner of the garage window, I see a little sign. And I walk up, and it's a little sign that says CrossFit Attain through the side entrance. And I walk in, it was a 300 square foot garage with four deadlift platforms, four squat racks, and they ran a class. Wow. And they're, they're a full-fledged affiliate out of a garage gym. It was like the good old days of CrossFit, circa yeah, yeah. 2008. Yeah. I didn't think they existed anymore. Yeah. Got a great workout. Uh, we did DT and 400 meter runs. It was killer workout, <laughs> running up and down the street in the subdivision. <laughs> or find yourself in a major city, a, a, go to Edmonton. If you're in Edmonton, hit a CrossFit Armory. Two locations, massive facility, excellent coaches, bunch of regional athletes roll out of that place. Yeah. Great spot. I wouldn't put one above the other in terms of the quality of the coaching or the workout. To just find a gym, get in, you're going to get a good workout, you're going to meet some great people, and you'll fill your closet full of t-shirts in no time. Yeah, that's the thing that I found at every place that I've been to. I've been to some really big ones um, with regionals and uh, athletes and other small little locations. You know what? The deadlift and or the uh, barbell and the plates—they all still weigh the same. So you know, as long as there's a, a quality coach that's really keeping an eye on the athlete, you're going to get the same kind of workout. Doesn't matter where you go. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks, Chris. It's cool. I really appreciate it. Thanks, John. The clock has run out. Are you thinking about visiting another box? I know I am. Chris's visit was a great opportunity to talk to a guest CrossFitter about a very different spin on the experience of visiting another box. It's a fundamental part of how he trains, and it presents some interesting challenges, but as you heard, he gets a lot of benefit from it, too. I hope everyone listening will take some of what Chris had to, to say to heart. Find an affiliate either nearby or while you're on vacation or away for work, and don't be afraid to jump into a wad. Check the ego, be coachable, work hard, move safely, and have fun. Please subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you get up, uh, upcoming episodes automatically as I'm joined by more guests to talk about fitness and health. And if you like this episode, do me a solid and write me a five-star review on iTunes. I hope to share some more reviews uh, and comments in future episodes. You can email 
feedback or ideas or really anything uh, to me at info at boxjumper.ca. And of course, visit the boxjumper.ca website for more fitness related stuff outside the podcast. And you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook with the handle at boxjumper over 40 with four zero. Uh, thanks for listening once again. Lots more to come. Until then, stay healthy, wad happy, and wad often. And just maybe, wad on the road.